I saw some comments from Brian Erlacher, Hall of Fame linebacker, recently about players who may or may not have cognitive problems. And it really infuriated me how dismissive he was about players who think they may have an issue. There are plenty of players walking around who currently feel fine, who worry about every little thing that happens that makes them think maybe this is the beginning of a potentially inevitable decline. Where did I put my keys? Is this the start? What did I have for lunch yesterday? Is this the start? This focus, and I'm not saying it's an unjustified focus on chronic traumatic encephalopathy, otherwise known as CTE, a condition that can only be diagnosed in the brain tissue of deceased patients, that it is some sort of a, I don't want to say death sentence, but it's it is a promise slash threat of future cognitive problems to come. There are a lot of players who think that. And Erlacher's very dismissive quote that some guys, and I'm paraphrasing here, act like they have CTE so they can get in the effing lawsuit. That is so misguided and so disrespectful to what the players have fought for and received via the class action that was filed against the NFL more than a decade ago. And it was settled preliminarily in 2013. It took a few years to get it finally resolved. And the bottom line is this. Any player who retired from the NFL before the class was certified, the full class of former players who were part of the concussion litigation, once that date hit, any retired player became eligible at any point in their life to get compensation for a specific range of cognitive problems that may develop at some point in life, or if they die with CTE, their family, their estate gets the benefits. That was part of the deal the NFL did to get itself out of an ugly spot. The NFL may have won the concussion lawsuit. Look, there were plenty of defenses available to the league, some threshold defenses along the lines of whether or not players even have standing to sue because maybe they would have been required to go through the CBA. Now, for some years, there was no CBA, so you can't use that as a silver bullet for those players, but that was one of the threshold issues. Statute of limitations would have been an issue. The failure to join the NFL Players Association as a defendant would have been an issue because the NFLPA had a seat at the table of the mild traumatic brain injury committee, which consistently downplayed the risks long-term and short-term of head trauma. There were defenses. There were ways the NFL could have minimized liability. And look, at the end of the day, you put these guys on the stand and you get them to tell the truth. How many guys would have not played football if the NFL had been as transparent as they should have been about the long-term risks of head trauma? The NFL was concerned about a reckoning that when the reckoning came, it didn't change anything. Other than Chris Borland, it hasn't changed anything. Now, the NFL has done what it's had to do to make the game safer, but that's a product of making sure that kids will keep playing. That's about making changes at the top level of the sport, hoping they trickle down and hoping that mom and dad won't say, hey, Football's too dangerous. Jay Glazer told a story years ago about being at his MMA gym out in Southern California. And a, a mom brought in her kid and said, I, I'd like him to get involved in this. I'm looking for something safer than football. And Jay's like, are you serious? This is safer than football. But that's part of the PR battle the NFL was trying to wage. And one of the things the NFL wanted to avoid was discovery in the concussion litigation that would have resulted in people finding out what the league knew, when it knew it, how it covered up what it knew about head trauma, all those years of downplaying the idea that it might not be a good idea for you to put a helmet on and bash your head into someone else's helmet or into shoulder pads or into kneecaps or wherever. So the point is this, to allow the NFL to avoid what would have been a potentially ugly and protracted lawsuit, it would probably still be going on today, frankly. The league set up a fund that allows players no questions asked. They don't have to prove they got it from football. If they have a qualifying condition, they're entitled to pay. It's not like you just show up and you lie. Hey, I got some of that CTE. Give me my money. That's the impression Erlacher created. And it's dangerous because it makes people think that folks are running some sort of a scam, that it's not real. 
that it's all contrived or embellished or exaggerated. These guys have an absolute right to try to get benefits. They have an absolute right to worry about whether or not they do have some sort of a cognitive problem. And comments like Erlacher's, especially from someone who is a retired player who is eligible for the same damn benefits that he's complaining others may be trying to get when they don't deserve them. You have the absolute right to try. And the guardrails are in place to prevent players from getting benefits they don't deserve. But at the end of the day, look, it's just more money out of the NFL's pocket. It's an unlimited fund that the NFL agreed would be available. At one point, there was a cap. The cap went away in order to get the settlement approved. So it's not like Erlacher has to worry there's not going to be enough money for him if he develops cognitive issues, if all these other guys with phony claims take the money. That's not an issue. The money's going to be there. I just don't get it. And sometimes guys just say things without thinking. And the players out there who either do have cognitive issues or think they have cognitive issues or want to preserve the ability, if they believe at some point they have a qualifying condition, you don't want to be looked down upon. You don't want to be shamed for trying to get what you deserve. So it just pissed me off. And look, I know he said, well, the guys who really deserve it are entitled to it, but those guys out there act like they have CTE just because they want to be in the effing lawsuit. You're allowed to act like you have it. You're allowed to think you have it. I'm not saying you should submit a fraudulent claim, but if you think you have it, the money's there for you. It's part of the compensation that is available to you for all the years you gave your body and your brain and your health and your livelihood to football. And the system is there to separate the real claims from the fake claims. Again, you don't just walk in and say, give me my money. I have cognitive issues. You got to prove it. It's just unfortunate. And I hope it doesn't cause guys who think they're too proud, who don't want to be shamed, who don't want to be criticized to not pursue the benefits that they have earned and to which they are entitled. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.